What's up everyone, welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're gonna to be checking out this awesome little background glitch effect that looks like this. And it's pretty awesome. It doesn't manipulate your subject at all. And I'll show you a couple tips and tricks on how to eliminate or isolate your background layers so that you can use this in your footage. So let's jump into what it looks like. So I think that looks pretty cool and it's fairly easy to do, but if you're curious, all those effects that you just saw are all in my ultimate effects pack that I just launched. Check the launch video down below if you're curious. And also, like I said in the launch video, I'm giving away one free version of it on every tutorial. So all you have to do is like this video and drop a comment and then I will randomly select a comment to be the winner. So without further ado, let's jump on into the computer and see how to do this effect. So now that we're on the computer, we have these two clips that we're working with. The first example is of a solid background. And then the second example is of a not so solid background. I'm gonna show you how to do both of them. So the first things first, we're gonna use the easy example. And this is like anything that has a solid background with it. So I'm gonna go to the effects tab and I'm gonna type in color key. Drag color key onto your clip and then go to the effects controls tab. And we're gonna select this eyedropper and select any color in our background. And then we're gonna drag up the color tolerance until it starts to remove our image away a little bit. Sometimes it's hard and doesn't remove it perfect. So just get it somewhere close. And then what you can do if you wanna remove more of it without deleting your subject, just duplicate your color key layer by right clicking, copy and right clicking paste, or just hit control C, control V on a PC and command C, command V on a Mac. And then we're gonna click the eyedropper tool on the second color key and select that area and then adjust our tolerance as needed. So you'll notice that like we're kind of masking out some of the eyes, but this is a really quick way when you have a solid background because it makes it that much quicker. All we have to do now is hold Alt on your keyboard or Option on a Mac and drag up. That'll duplicate your layer. And then this bottom layer, we're actually gonna select both of those color key layers and delete them. So now we have this top footage layer is our mask and you can rename this. So I'm just gonna rename it to mask layer so we can stay organized. So now anything I do to this bottom clip will actually not affect that top clip as you can see right here. So you can like mess around with scale. And this is where the fun happens where you can just like punch in and out of like different scales and then see what it does to get your desired effects as you can see right there. In a nutshell, this is what I kind of wanted to show you because if you guys pick up my ultimate effects pack, I want to show you how easy it is. All you have to do is drag your mask layer up pretty high and then going into my ultimate effects pack, you can literally just drag effects down into your timeline. As you'll see, it's dragging in the audio with it and it's pretty seamless. Since our mask layer is on top, it actually won't be manipulated. So if you play back through this, check it out. So if you're curious, you can pick that up if you want to. Moving forward, I'm gonna show you how to create an example if you don't wanna pick up the effects pack. So first things first, go to your project window and then click on this button right here, which is a new item button, and then go to adjustment layers and click OK. So the big thing is just dragging your mask clip to the top and then making your adjustment layer in between your mask and your base layer. So on this adjustment layer, we can pretty much modify anything that we want to. So for this example, I'm probably just gonna do a scale effect. So I'm gonna go to the effects tab and type in transform and then drag transform onto that adjustment layer and then go into the effects controls. I'm just gonna keyframe the scale and I'm also gonna right click and select hold hit my right arrow key a couple times and then go to 105, right arrow key once, go to 150, one more time to the right and then go back to 100, go two times and then go 115. And then let's do this again a couple more times and then back down to 100. So playing back through this right away, you can see that we're instantly getting some scale manipulation going on, which is pretty fun. And then using this clip, you can kind of stack these adjustment layers as much as you want you can just hold alt and copy that adjustment layer. And then you can also drag that adjustment layer around even the ones that we've already created to get even a more unique example. Going into the effects a little bit more, you can really just play around with all these effects. So I'm gonna drag on levels onto my top layer. And then I'm just going to just start dragging these around and see what happens. So we're gonna manipulate the white a little bit. So I'm gonna keep, put a keyframe right there, right click. I'm gonna select hold again, just because I think holds help with I guess, um, making something punchy and more stuttery. So all I'm doing is keyframing a couple keyframes and dragging them around till I get a look that I want. So playing back through this, you can instantly see that we're starting to get some crazy stutter effects going on. So I highly advise playing around with all of this stuff. 
So moving on to our last final clip, this is the more complex example because you have to do this manually. Click on your clip and then all you have to do is go to the effects controls tab and then under opacity, you're gonna click the free draw bezier tool and this is how we can create our mask. It'll create this little pen tool. So you wanna click this button right here, which is the zoom level and change it to about 200%. And then we're gonna move around our image using these sliders so we can get a custom mask. All you wanna do is basically create a couple points. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, the longer you spend on creating this mask, the more detail you will have in your glitch effect. I found that cutting off a little bit into the black area creates um, a better effect because if you have like a contrasting background, sometimes it won't work the best. Again, I would highly advise spending so much time on this, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to jump into creating like really complex masks. And then once you finish creating your mask, you will close it off by clicking the final mask. And now we have a rough mask and all we have to do now is keyframe this. So we're gonna select this button right here, which is the toggle animation under the mask path. And then we're gonna scroll a couple frames into the right direction. And then I'm gonna select mask again. And then all I'm gonna do is move this around so it matches my subject. So that looks pretty good. And let's just play back through this and we have a decent mask going on. You can scrub through and then anywhere you need to adjust your mask, you should adjust it accordingly. Let's zoom back out to our fit level and you can see this. As you can see, it's a very rough mask, but it'll do the job. If you spend more time on it, you can make a better mask. And then what you're gonna do is hold Alt on your keyboard and drag your clip up and then rename the top clip your mask layer. So now that we have our mask layer on top and the control clip on the bottom, what you're gonna do is give yourself some room and drag this arrow down a little bit. So now all you have to do is drag your own mask layer and then we're gonna go to our project window and drag another adjustment layer onto our clip. Dragging that adjustment layer down, we're just gonna cut it to the size of our clip by hitting C on the keyboard, make a cut, and then delete the other back half. What I'm gonna do now is basically adjust this scale a little bit. So I'm gonna do it a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna drag the transform tool on, uncheck uniform scale, and I'm gonna change the scale width a little bit to get it a little bit more uh, wider. As you can see, our mask is not a very good mask. So um, I'm gonna change the feather to zero so it's a little bit sharper. And then from here, we're gonna create some effects. So what I'm gonna do is click this create four polygon mask on the transform tool. And this is kind of how we can create some stutter effects if we want to. I'm gonna click on this point and then hold shift and click on that point. And then I'm gonna drag to the right so I can get a little horizontal line. So instantly we got this like little uh, horizontal line going on. And then what we can do now is chop up our adjustment layer a little bit, add a couple cuts here and there, and then just cut the clip as we need. And then you can move these around as well. And then on these adjustment layers, as you can see, we're starting to get some flicker effects. I'm going to simply click on any adjustment layer and then move the mask around a little bit, and then repeat this process a couple times till I get the look I want. As you can see, it's moving around all over the place. And what I wanna do now is drag my mask layer up and then I'm gonna highlight all of these adjustment layers, duplicate them by holding Alt on my keyboard or Option on a Mac and start rearranging these again. And you can stack these as much as you want. You can kind of move them around and then you can click on each individual adjustment layer and then move your mask because moving it around um, a couple times will give you varied effects. And this is an easy way to get a quick little stutter background glitch like ripping effect. So definitely play around with that. But if you guys are curious about more glitches in the uh, future and tutorials, let me know and I will make that happen. In a nutshell, that's kind of how you do this effect. It's super simple. As always, hit that like button and drop a comment because I may select you as the winner of today's one free version of my new effects pack. Check out the launch video down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.